everyone, this is Nick Bruner here from Preview Animation Studios and I am now making tutorials. So I'm very excited. So I started off with this ocean scene that you can see right here. I thought I'd start off pretty simple. Um, ocean scene is really easy to create in Blender. So um, yeah, this is the finished render result that I have achieved. So we're going to go ahead and recreate this scene in Blender. So let's go ahead and hop into Blender right now. Okay, so now that we are in Blender, let me just make sure, okay, I am recording. All right, um, now that we are in Blender, we can go ahead and get started. So you can use the default cube, that's fine. Just go to the modifier panel and add in the ocean modifier. And uh, yeah, this is what you should get. So we're gonna change some of the settings here. We're gonna repeat it along the X two times, just to make sure that we have enough ocean in our shot to work with. So I'm just going to center this up on the scene as well. Going to go ahead and delete the default lamp. We don't really need that. And we'll do the camera later. Okay, with the ocean selected, we're going to go ahead and change the choppiness to 5. And we're going to change the resolution to 20. Okay, so that'll give you nice resolution there. And then we're going to change the scale down to 0.7. And we're also going to change the alignment just a couple. I think that should be good. I think the choppiness is a little too high now. There we go. All right, and we can also affect the scaling by hitting S then Z. I guess I should turn on my screencast keys. There you go. All right, so S then Z, and we can affect the scaling. So I think around in there should be good. You want some nice high waves. I found that that worked well for this scene. Okay, so let's go ahead and duplicate this ocean right here. So just duplicate, shift D, then G, Y, and move that along the Y axis. And then we're just gonna turn the resolution down to 10 and everything else to zero because in the ocean, in a normal ocean, uh, you have the horizon line that just goes out to that straight line. So to mimic that in Blender, we're just basically adding in plane. So go ahead and scale it down just a little bit. We don't need it that big. And make sure that it is underneath the first ocean. So just move this along right there. All right, that's good. And go ahead and repeat that along the X again, just so we have enough ocean in our shot that we can work with. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in the sky right now. So I have the add-on images as planes enabled by default. And just gonna grab my sky here. Here we go. And go ahead and check emission for whatever kind of sky you're gonna use. And here we go. All right, so here is our sky. It is a plane and it's already set to go in Blender. So we're just gonna move that back, scale that up to fit the scene for right now. We'll scale it when we get our camera set up. Just go ahead and scale that like that. And uh, we don't want any of the ocean in the shot. So just move that below and the photographer of this picture actually was made it crooked so just fix that like that that should be good and i also want the sun over on this side so to do that just um, rotate it along the z by 180 degrees and there you go now it's on that side all right let's go ahead and get our camera set up here so control alt numpad zero That'll snap the camera to a view. All right, and we're just gonna move this in here. Get a little bit of a different shot. Here we go. All right, so onto the camera settings. We're gonna use a lower uh, focal length just to get a full shot. I'm also gonna change my dimensions to be a widescreen format. This is my uh, movie format that I've been using um, for my film, actually, too. So 
kind of gives a cinematic feel to it. So that's why I'm going to use that. I'm just going to double tap R and you can move the camera like that. So I'm just going to get some more sun in the shot. Come up a little bit. That should be good. Um, I always select red one 4K. I don't actually know if it renders in 4K, um, but I always do that. And I always turn on the rule of thirds just so I can line it up correctly. All right. All right, the depth of field. Okay, so you want a short depth of field. About, mm, I think about 10 should be good. And I always use f-stop. And for this one, we're just gonna set it to three. And that'll give some nice depth of field, especially with this wave in the front right there. All right, so that is pretty good. So now we got the scene set up, let's go ahead and do the materials. Okay, so the materials for the ocean, let's go ahead and go to the materials. And since we duplicated it, there's a two right there, so we can just leave that. We're gonna go ahead and change it to glass. And we're going to set the roughness to, I think it was a 0.2 that I used for my final result. And the index of refraction for water is 1.333. So you go ahead and type that in. And this will adjust the uh, brightness of the ocean. So if you want a darker ocean, just set it down in there. But I'm just going to leave it at default. And you can name that if you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on the lighting. That's pretty much the last thing we need to do. Then we can render it and composite it. Composite it. And then I'm actually going to show you how to animate it as well. So let's go ahead and kill that. And then let's go back to our sky. And if we were to go into rendered viewport shading right now, uh, you would see a dome effect, which is meaning that the clipping is too low. Um, it's also using my CPU to render right now. So it's quite slow. Let me just change that to my GPU so it hurries up and renders quickly. All right, just uh, turn the clipping up to something high, and there you go. All right, you can also see that with the add-on that we used, it enables the light path is camera ray. And what that means is that it becomes a shadeless material. The way to make it completely shadeless, shadeless is to uncheck that it doesn't actually cast a shadow onto the scene. So you always want to do that for your skies. And if you want the sky to actually emit light, you want to just go ahead and remove that. And there you go. There's our ocean. So like I said, we'll reposition the sky here just a little bit. And that is good just like that. Okay. Let me just bump this up as well on the brightness, but we can do that in the compositor. Um, that is pretty much it. So I'm actually going to increase that all the way so we have lots of light bouncing off. And I'm also going to check border rendering so it only renders what's inside the camera. And that should be good. The border rendering just helps with... Um, speed of your computer it doesn't slow it down it doesn't render all this stuff off frame it just renders what's inside the camera all right for our rendering we'll probably do about 400 samples because this scene can be quite noisy um, with the different materials that it has and i always check full global illumination as well and that is pretty much it we can add in a sun effect um but you can see that it already gives a nice effect even in the um, default scene in the modeling process. I mean, this doesn't even have special effects to it right now. So you can just see that it has a nice glowy haze already, which is really cool. Because when I was doing my scene, I wasn't really expecting that. And then I go rendered viewport shading and it was like, whoa. So it was pretty cool. All right, let me just check that everything else is good to go. I may just go down to the water a little bit more. And just, uh, if you're having a hard time selecting your camera, just go ahead and scale it up. It'll be easier to select. Just a little tip there for you. All right, I'm just gonna go 
right there. Now normally you wouldn't want to go this close to the edge of the ocean because when you animate it the ocean is going to be like the waves are going to be like up in here but I'm just going to do a still shot for right now and then we'll move it later. Okay um yeah I'm determining if I want to add in a sky in the blender um, program or in Photoshop but I know not all of you probably have Photoshop so I'll just do it in blender so the way to add in a sun to your scene is to add in a circle let me just zoom in on it there by hitting period button zooms in on the object that's selected a little another tip there for you I always increase the vertices and make sure you fill it that's very important then just rotate that along the X 90 degrees there we go so it's on its side like that okay go ahead and just shift select layer one the object that you're doing the effects with needs to be on its own separate layer so that's very important all right just gonna line this up in here look at it through the camera what a nice Sun right up in there maybe a little bit bigger down over the waves to make it look like the waves are blocking the Sun unfortunately with cycles it doesn't have the old Z um, option under the passes category I don't know if it'll ever get it but that's one thing that I liked about the blender internal is that when you check all Z um, your special effect objects like a Sun would actually go behind an object but I don't know if that's ever coming back into cycles or not but anyway with the Sun selected we're just gonna do an emission material about level 2 that should be good make sure it's completely white as well and let's go to here add in another layer just name this as Sun just check that it renders in layer 2 and this one you can just uncheck layer 2 I don't think it really matters though um, but make sure you have both layers selected or else it won't render um, but that's pretty much it um, yeah so we are on the rendering process so go ahead and hit render and my computer is not that bad so it won't take that long um, but yeah I'll see you when this is done okay so it has finished it wasn't too long it was about a minute so let's go ahead and go over to the compositor so just hit control left arrow and then control up go full screen on the node editor window let's go ahead and check use nodes and backdrop all right okay so control um control shift left click will add in a viewer node so that's a little uh, tip there for you as well okay so I like working in a long array of nodes um, you might have downloaded one of my blends on blend swap and been like man there's like this long trail of nodes that's just the way that I've always worked with the nodes so all right first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to color and color balance and we're just gonna change the colors on this a little bit more all right so this is the main coloring of your scene so I'm just gonna change that to be a little bit more orange and then you want to complement that with the other side of the color so you want complementary colors on your shot so just a little orange and just a little blue okay let's go ahead and add in a hue and saturation value um, I always add in this node just to make my colors pop more in my render sometimes it's you know you don't want it but most of the time I add that in just makes the sky pop a little bit more and anything else that's in the shot all right I'm gonna also add in RGB curve I use this for brightness there we go um, let's just bump up the brightness just a little bit you don't want it too bright because we're gonna be adding in a filter and a glare or fog glow so just change that to fog glow there we go 
All right, um, I like to use the biggest size that I can get. And I also change the threshold down. You don't want to go too overboard, but you do want some nice glow. So that's a little too much glow. Um, you got to keep in mind too that our sun's going to be here and that's going to have a nice glow right there as well. So we could probably leave that at about 0 0.7, 0 0.8, just a little bit of an effect, but that's pretty good. All right. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in a distort lens distortion. I'm just going to drop that in right there. And I'm going to turn the distort to a 0.1. Yes. And then this is going to do the fisheye lens effect. And then you just check on fit so it actually fits the render still. And then you can see that it actually kind of bulges out like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm also going to duplicate that, just uncheck that, set that back to zero. I'm going to add in some grammatic apparition, uh, about, I think that should be good. Um, I see a lot of renders that they go way overboard on this, and it's not even that much on normal cameras. So you can see here, it's just a nice faint effect. So I'm acting like this is a cinematic camera. And with that, you're not going to have that much grammatic apparition. At least I haven't seen it in all the movies that I've watched. So sometimes you can over dramatize, dramatize that effect. You can't talk. And um, yeah, you just have to look at your scene and determine if it needs it. A scene like this doesn't need that much, but it does need some. Okay, let's go ahead and work next on the sun, one of the last effects that we need to do. So just go ahead and select your sun layer. And if you did it right, you should just see a nice white dot. And you can add effects to it. So we're going to add two blur nodes to get a nice hazy glow. I'm going to set that to fast Gaussian relative. I always use X seems to work the best and I'm gonna choose five and five that should be good all right and then we're gonna duplicate that drag that original render layer in there again and then we're gonna go bigger so about 10 and 10 okay and then to combine the two blurs together we're gonna to go color mix and then drag them into this node and then change that to add and there you go you have the two blurs put together into one add node so there we go now we want to add in a streak and then the lens flare so let's do the streak first so let's go filter and glare let's add this in here you're actually going to want to duplicate this add node and get the original white dot back and then set that into the top and the glare into the bottom. So you have the original dot back. All right, and then we're gonna set that threshold pretty much down all the way. So you can see the streak starting to come in. Let me just move this around so we can see what's happening. All right, let's just turn that all the way to zero. And then let's turn up the fade amount. That's gonna be longer streaks like that. Let's turn up the iterations to about four or five. That should be good. That'll give you longer streaks. And then we just want to do that nice two streak effect. That's cool like that. Let's turn the fade amount down just a little bit more. Okay. And then we're going to add in some more color in the color mod. All right. And then let's uh, rotate that a little bit. Uh, let's go 15 degrees Yeah, there we go Okay, now to do the lens flare same thing duplicate the add node uh, Just get a new glare node in here set that to ghosts quality to high Let's uh, plug the original dot into the glare node and then that into the bottom again and turn the threshold down to zero 
turn up the color modulation just a little bit and then wait for it to composite there we go okay so you can see the nice blender lens flare there um just gonna add in some more iterations that's good all right so that's the sun pretty much done if you wanted like thinner streaks you would have to turn your sun or scale the sun down more this is just streaking at how big the um, sun is so i don't actually think that there's a way to scale that down but we'll probably do that for the final render the final final render all right and then to combine both the scenes in together you're going to do just one big add node just like that and like that all right and wait for it to composite All right, there we go. There is the sun right there. So that is good. And you can see the lens flare. If you want more of the sun effect, just turn up the factor amount and that'll give you more. Uh, nice big glow right there. Yep, there we go. All right, so just make sure you plug that into the composite so it renders. And yes, last thing we need to do is the vignette, of course. So I do it, I don't know if this is an old school way yet or not, but this is the way that I've always done a vignette. So lens distortion, distort to one, converter math, plug that into the top, value to zero, type to greater than, then add in a filter blur. Uh, there we go. Uh, value into the image port, type, fast Gaussian relative X and 30 by 30 and then we're gonna go color mix to combine all that together take the blur set that into the bottom and the original scene into the top make sure you plug that in there too all right and then set that to multiply there we go so there's the vignette setup all right, just wait for it to composite. There we go. All right, it's too much of a vignette though. Don't wanna go overboard on the vignette, so. Wait for it to composite, there we go. All right, so that is basically a final render. Uh, one other node that you can add in that I added in in mine too, just the sharpen node, just to make everything more sharper obviously so that was just filter and then filter okay so just set that to be about a point one don't want to go too high obviously <laughs> so um let's wait for it to composite there we go just adds a little bit more sharpness up on the top of the waves and that is pretty much it so just plug that one into the composite now so that is our node setup all right so that is pretty much it uh, so coming from this raw render which actually still isn't bad because of that nice glow effect that it does i love that um, taking it through the compositor i call it the compositor car wash uh, this is just making your scene look better hence that the car wash does that as well <laughs> Um, but this is the final rendered scene, so um, you can just pull that up, the viewer node, and then just save the image as you would normally. But I'm just going to show you how to animate it real quick. So um, we can do a nice camera animation. I'm just going to add in some more frames so we have more time to work with. About 500 should be a nice shot. I'll um, just zoom out here so I can see the entire timeline. Okay, so the camera, we're just gonna, gonna double tap R and I'm just gonna go up on my shot as well because like I said with the ocean, you don't want it coming, like the waves coming across the camera like that. Like, I'll show you if it happens. But uh, we just wanna add in a shot, maybe like this, just a nice pan up. So I'm gonna do the location and rotation, then jump to the last frame by hitting shift right arrow, and then just double tap that 
again on R. Maybe go forward a little bit more and then come down on the shots. All right, then I lock her up. So now we got a nice camera motion. And to make sure that the speed stays, stays the same all the time, we're just gonna go to the graph editor. And all you have to do is just hit V hovering over this area right here and just do vector. So the speed is always gonna be consistent. This is with the camera selected as well. And you can see there that we just have a nice camera motion and it all looks good. All right, let's go ahead and work on the ocean next. So all you have to do is just at the beginning of the animation, just hover over the time and hit I, and then jump to the last frame again, and then set that to be a higher number, maybe like 15 or 20, probably just do 20. But the higher you make that number, the faster your waves are gonna be. So as we scroll through the animation now, you can see that the waves are moving and they are reacting well. All right. Yep, no problems. Yeah, it looks good. All right. So we don't need to animate this one. This is just acting as the horizon line. Um, but you might actually want to just bring that image down a little bit see a little bit of that ocean still there um, but that is pretty much it um, yeah so again this is the final here we go uh, oops lost my viewer node that's weird all right just gotta wait for it to composite Okay, there we go. Make sure I'm recording. All right, so this is the final render result. So I hope you learned something and go ahead and animate your ocean however you want and then render it out. Um, but that is pretty much it. Um, thanks for watching this video. I hope you like it. Um, let me know how I did. This is my first tutorial, so I'm gonna be doing a lot more. But um, that is pretty much it from me. So I hope you like the render result as well. And yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching and have a great day.